Welcome to the Business of Influence podcast. I'm your host, Karen White. If you're a creator or a community maker looking to expand your influence, increase revenue, profit, and productivity, you're in the right place. Join me every Tuesday to learn strategies to elevate your career as a professional influencer. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. Now let's get started. Back in the early days of social media, many of us with a social media account were UGC creators. UGC is user-generated content. And that's just when a user on social media posts content and tags a brand. Think that perfect soy flat white from your favorite barista tagged on Insta. That's UGC. A gorgeous new pair of shoes that you've been coveting finally got in and tagged the brand and posted to social. UGC. Living your hashtag best life on a girls weekend at a cute getaway with the B&B tagged, that's UGC. Every time a post is published on socials with a brand tagged, it's UGC and brands love it. And why wouldn't they? It's free advertising, isn't it? So what's the difference between anyone with a social media account posting and tagging a brand and a professional UGC creator? In today's episode, we're going to take a look at what really is UGC, why brands love UGC content, what is a UGC creator, what are the differences between UGC creators and influencers, because they're not the same. We'll take a look also at how brands work with UGC creators and I'll wrap it all up with some tips for UGC creators, whether you're currently in the space or looking to become a UGC creator. What is UGC? In the digital marketing space, UGC is really just a fancy way of saying content that regular people you know, the non-creators post about brands. Think about it as the stuff you'd share on social media, the photos, the videos, the review, the shout outs, maybe even a podcast. It's all about real people sharing the real experiences. Just like we said at the top of the episode, that girls weekend away, an awesome pair of shoes, that beautiful, beautiful coffee that I'm craving right now from your favorite barista. When we really like a brand's product, we love to jump on socials and share a photo or video of us talking about the product, the service or the experience. And for today's episode, let's just focus on positive content. We'll deal with negative content in a future episode. When we take a photo or video, post it on socials and tag the brand, that's UGC. It's pretty straightforward. And there's a bunch of reasons why brands love UGC content. Let's set the scene with a specific example. Someone has just bought a really cute dress. They've done a get ready with me video styling the dress and they are totally rocking the look. They post the content online, the brand is tagged and they see that content. Hurrah! The brand sees the content and the person who posted the content is sending out that really positive brand message to their audience and generally to social media. The brands love this because they now have authentic content relating to their product or service, which they didn't have to create themselves. This type of content really builds customer trust because consumers trust recommendations from others more than they trust brand advertising. And of course, this drives sales. 
We'll talk about some statistics a little bit later on in the episode, but this is just a really soft introduction as to why brands love UGC content. And of course, we've got that really great trust piece that's being created through the content being posted online on behalf of the brand. But then the brand also has the opportunity to have their social team get in touch with that person and ask for permission to repurpose or repost the content. This is awesome because the brand has just scored new content that they didn't have to create themselves. Better still, it's authentic, relatable and can be trusted by their customer base. I'm going to give you four quick stats on this as to why brands really love this sort of content. Around 80% of consumers say that UGC content really impacts their purchasing decisions. Amazing. Brand engagement increases by around 28 to 30% when customers are exposed to a nice mix of brand content and UGC content. Millennials spend around 30% of their daily media consumption on UGC, which is massively higher than traditional media. And lastly, UGC videos on YouTube receive about 10 times more views than brand produced video. I could sit here and dedicate an entire episode as to why UGC content performs so well for brands. But if you want some more stats around this and all the juice on why brands love UGC, just click through to the show notes. I'll wrap them all up in a blog post for you rather than bog today's episode down in a whole bunch of stats. We want to get into the like the juicy stuff. So what is a UGC creator? We, we've spoken about regular peeps posting branded content online, but what actually does a UGC creator do? They are actually engaged by brands, so paid by brands, to create the content that looks like it was created by the average peep. In other words, they're paid to create that raw, unpolished content that looks like it's been created by a consumer. So it looks like it's been created by a consumer, but really it is a creator producing that content on behalf of the brand. Okay, so that's the difference between regular folk and UGC creators. Regular peeps just pop branded content onto their channel, tag a brand and get on with their life. Great. UGC creators are paid by brands to produce that raw, unpolished content. What then are the differences between UGC creators and influencers? There's two primary differences, and that is the content distribution and the content production. Both UGC creators and influencers produce content for brands. They are both professional content creators with an understanding of storytelling, audience building, and creativity. The difference is that UGC creators provide content for brands to use on their own channels or their ads, almost like a, an actor or a model might. And UGC creators don't post on their own channels. Whereas influencers are used by brands to reach a wider audience. In other words, UGC creators don't usually have a large audience or following, but influencers do. Like everything, there are some exceptions to this. Some UGC creators have actually built quite a nice following and may also be successfully securing brand work as a micro-influencer. When UGC creators post content on their own channels, they're actually working as an influencer rather than a UGC creator. So that sort of slips us into that content production piece now. The goal of a UGC creator is to produce that raw, authentic consumer content. We're going to keep speaking about this. 
This means that they'll usually shoot on an iPhone and maybe edit with CapCut or something really quick and easy on the go. UGC creators aren't out there using really fancy equipment and advanced post-production for their content. This is an intentional approach and a mechanism to make the content grab your attention. It looks natural and organic, but it isn't. So a UGC creator's content is quite different to what an influencer will usually produce because they're more likely to have advanced pre and post-production efforts, more styling and more scripting. Influencers are going to have that content appear on their channel and most of them will have that quite polished look and feel about the content they create. Let's talk now about how brands work with UGC creators. We spoke earlier about how UGC content performs quite well for brands on social because viewers or customers or consumers see that content and engage quite well with it. It feels organic and authentic. So brands look for UGC creators to pay to create UG style content that blends into users' feeds. UGC content is usually TikTok, Instagram Reels and Shorts. But UGC content engagement for brands also extends to blog and other sorts of content too. Although we know that TikTok, Reels and Shorts are the most popular form of UGC content at the moment. Just like influencers, UGC creators are paid to create branded content. The difference is that this content is not usually published on the UGC creators channels. If you're listening in as a UGC creator or thinking about becoming one, I'm going to wrap up today's episode with some challenges and opportunities for you to consider. The UGC market is quite saturated. It is not overly saturated, but as a UGC creator, you face heavy competition to make your profile stand out with brands. Differentiate yourself. Create a unique brand aesthetic. Please don't bombard brands with the same Canva template and that cut-paste pitching email that they would have seen a hundred, probably a thousand times before. In fact, consider if you should even be approaching brands at all. Just like our very own influencer cancel culture, Brands are becoming increasingly happy to clap back from fatigue arising from the constant inundation of creator pitches. Cultivate your aesthetic and portfolio and find the right ways to approach brands. A tip here is if you haven't listened to episode 12 for your media kit essentials and episode 7 on how brands choose influencers, I'm going to link those in the notes for you to go back and listen to. You'll have some strong recommendations in there. Moving into some positive things, there are changing brand budgets. This is really good stuff. Working with UGC creators is cheaper for brands and it can significantly increase their return on ad spend. So with these changing brand budgets... Brands are more likely to consider working with a UGC creator because really they're going to get more for their money. There is a trend for an increase of UGC in brand marketing strategy. A recent uh, survey around uh, marketers said that UGC is a really big or key component of their marketing strategy. And this is mostly because it plays such an important role in how it positively affects consumer decisions. So as a UGC creator, it's great to know that there is an increased appetite or an increased interest by brands to use UGC content. 
Yes, good stuff. And we're going to wrap up today's episode with continued positive thoughts. Professional UGC creators rise above. I said that the UGC creator market is saturated, but it is not saturated with experienced and professional UGC creators. Build your distinct aesthetic. Build your portfolio. Make it easy for brands to contact you and engage with you and stick with it. Just like I say to those looking to build a career as a professional influencer, and really this rings true for all successful careers, it does take effort, but the results can really be there when you put in the quality work and the effort. So there is opportunity for you to build a successful career as a UGC creator when you do stick with it and put in that effort. Bring your big creative personality forward. Learn the tips and tricks that are going to make you really successful and have longevity in your chosen profession. Social media is a critical part of a brand's marketing strategy. As a UGC creator or as an aspiring UGC creator, you can take advantage of the shift from perfectly curated content to that more gritty and authentic content that consumers love and brands love too. As always, you can find the show notes and all the resources that we've spoken about in today's episode at thebusinessofinfluence.com forward slash EP16. Until next week, stay creative.